I'm the one right before the uh, Z. Yes, I'm the Y millennials. Okay. Now, he's a Y millennial, and he says that he sees no problem that they can all come together. Why would he say that? That's his perception. That's his perception. His perception? He doesn't know anybody. Any other answers? He's 20. You're 20 something, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just one clarification. Yeah. Why millennials relate extremely well to prior generations? Extremely well. They relate very well with baby boomers traditionals. They're kind of close to Gen Xers. And they typically desire to be mentored and to work with people and learn from them. So he does not see an issue. And when we talk about generations, we are talking about tendencies. It's not always the case. Tendency. So when I talk to clients and they go, oh, those millennials, <laughs> I have to pull them down and talk about tendency. But in your experience, what's keeping the different generations from working together? Communication. Okay. Or lack thereof. All right. How does communication go? Well, Tendencies, what I find is that the older yeah. generation want to dominate, the younger generation doesn't feel like they're being heard or given a voice. And, and, and there's a communication breakdown right there. I think that's right. I think another, something else that has to do with it is that millennials and younger generations, communication is so constant and commonplace that we haven't really been taught how to formally introduce ourselves, formally communicate with people um, outside of our family and friends, how we you know, speak very informally with them, slang and all that kind of stuff. And I've been throughout the now seven years I've been in college and university systems, I've been many professors send out emails about how to email a professor because our generation doesn't use formal greetings and emails or letters and they don't know how to communicate in a formal setting and that's really what the older generations are used to expecting and so I think there's also a, a breakdown with younger generations approach older generations in the commonplace informal way that we know how to communicate and older generations are a little taken aback. Like, where are your where are your manners? Where are your Mr. and Mrs. and thank you and pleases? And so. And then the message is lost. Right, and then yeah, and then it gets devolved into all the little distractions instead of what the message is supposed to be about. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Teresa. Bond. Hi, Teresa. And just to echo how we can be uh, more effective in our community, trying to, you know, get uh, 
the community more involved, mainly trying to empower them uh, with the knowledge, the importance of our community, uh, having uh, people within the community working, you know, hand in hand uh, to deal with issues that we deal with daily. So let me ask you a few questions because I'm hearing a similar thread. So, so first, you know, there's getting information out. So are there challenges with actually getting information and reaching people? Because there's, there's several there's several steps to engage in, right? It is. We are we do do the uh, we do flyers. Mm -hmm. We do uh, it's our news newsletter that we have. Okay. Uh, and then we just started the uh, calling polls. We just started the call, call and polls, mm -hmm. and then we do we do the text as well. Ah, you so, do text messaging. Yeah, we we my children finally. Uh, <laughs> so, so let me let me, my so, so let, me let me just stop for a second. Let me just say something interesting because because people uh, often think of texting as being something for the young. Okay, and I gave you a statistic earlier that. The average person looks at their cell phone a hundred times a day. Yeah. 150 yeah. times a day. So, but here's the bigger statistic for why a text message, if it's important, is 97% of the text messages are read within four minutes of them going out. So, you know, despite an 80% of the, of the people believe, of any age, the best way to engage people is being texting. And, and I was in a session the other day and I was trying to really in, in, in tell people texting is everyone texts. And the best way to reach people is via text. So I'll give you an example. It's a little like the internet age. So the number of cell phones on this planet that are used is four times the number of computers serving the internet. And so when you send an email out, and the email response rates, and I'm not doing a do a social media sad thing, but I want to do this for mindset. So average response rates on one email are very low. 10%, 20%. But what we're assuming is, is that they're at their computer or they're reading mail. There's a, and what I'm trying to work with my clients on now is understanding that text messaging is the ultimate way to get to people. First, for awareness. Second, if you have the right thing, they'll be engaged. Third, they're going to answer. And the best way for exposure now, in spite of age, it gets, it gets by the whole social media challenge. Look, my, my mother is a retired teacher. She's 84. She has an iPad. She, she tech, she's all over tech. She's, she's an exception. <laughs> she's an exception. But I'm a technology person because she gave me an Apple when I was like 13. Okay? But many of her friends, you know, and she deals with what her friends where they are with technology. So I have to do the senior thing I'm familiar with. But the thing I was going to say to tie the senior stuff up is texting is a way to really engage them. So for the, for the, the folks that are dealing with the larger age groups, you know, flyers are time consuming, they're expensive. I know when I get stuff in my mailbox, I pitch it because it's too close to my bills. I don't want them anyway. Um, but but think about texting. We could talk more about that. But I also I have yeah, texting but, but I wanted to stop there because I'm really thrilled you're using that because the flyer stuff sometimes we do it because we have to. But we have to think of communication as multiple arrows in our quiver. There's no one silver bullet for communication. Even even if it's a, a, a group of people that are older and less technical, technical prowess. Um, so we'll finish up. I want to introduce you, obviously. But but let me just finish up. We're almost done. My concern is I want to be able to, and, I, and I'm having to challenge how to get started, get it right, even though we want to um, make it happen. It's two things in my community. I'm in the community. And, uh, Getting because where I live yeah, right is we have residents in my house. And then with that, that, is that is that we have a lot of people because they're in the car and they, they, uh, they make us such a large part. Yeah, I'm here today, I'm gone tomorrow, but you play a very intricate part in it. And a lot of the needs that are in, that are crucial to our community, a lot of us have to go other places to get them. And I feel like if I could just um, just kind of get that generated into the middle and like a common water hole, then we can get some changes in progress. But, and I, on my own, I've reached out and try to find property. There's property on campus and all of that. But I get, oh, well, what do you need? Okay, we'll call you back if you want that. 
and the My challenge is how do I get that help? And me trying to figure it out on my own how to do it is what's taking it so long. Uh, neighborhood neighborhood planning unit. Okay. So it's a system that the city of Atlanta has um, for all the neighborhoods where you've got basically um, in a small designated area which are like mines, like houses, works to deal with all the aspects of community development.